When life gives you lemons, should you make a battery? All jokes aside, but welcome back to my series, you guys, as we are talking about the nitty gritty topics of everyday life and objects and things and things that we put in our body. And that includes lemons. Now, I've been doing a lot of home cooking. I've been doing a lot of experimenting with different items and objects and seeing the different properties involved in them and lemons have been kind of interesting to me. Now, if you have seen my last video where we talked about fermentation and we talked about canning and regulations, we also talked about pH levels and acidic foods. Now, if you missed that video, if you missed that video, you should definitely go check it out. And we're gonna be just talking about the science of lemonade. And what we're doing in our series is we're breaking it down, different recipes, and this is where we apply our knowledge. Now this is gonna be a part of the canning series because it involves acidity, and I thought this would be a good way to test pH levels or show you the differences in acidic foods versus alkaline foods. So not only are we gonna be making super delicious lemonade, but we're also gonna be testing the different properties of it and looking at the different chemical reactions that we can create with lemons. Gosh. So I have four lemons here. Two of them are much larger than the other one. I'm gonna be making some really yummy lemonade and I'm also gonna be doing a little fun exper experiment with you guys that you can do with your family as long as you are safe and as long as you are prepared for possibly a mess. <laughs> So if you want to participate in this experiment, all you will need is lemon, water, and then you'll need your alkaline, which we're going to be using baking soda. So essentially your lemon is going to be your acidic foods. It, there's a scale, it's called the pH scale, if you're familiar with it. You might have done some experiments in school. Look at that, and based on where on the scale has a lower number, that's a higher acidic food. And if it has a higher number, that actually means it's lower acidic, it's on the lower side, which I talked about this in my canning video. That's why I say you should really go check that video out to fully understand what we're talking about but we're gonna mix these two together and I'm gonna show you what we get so now I have my lemon juice poured out into a glass now just add about a teaspoon don't you love a good sound of a fizzy drink so what happened here, when we added the alkaline into the acidic food, into our lemon juice, which is actually an electrolyte. We'll get into that in a second though. So what happened is we actually created CO2 or carbon dioxide, and that's what caused it to fizz up. That's the chemical reaction that occurs between an alkaline and an acidic. Now something really cool is this doesn't happen in our body. Luckily, when we drink these two foods together, an alkaline versus an acidic, that does not happen inside of our body because the circumstances within our body, the environment controls for this and there's certain parts of our organ systems that help control it. We get into that in the other series. Now I don't care how much this smells like lemonade, I'm probably not going to drink that. So can you make a battery out of a lemon and how? Because I'm sure you've seen it, so obviously you know that this is a rhetorical question and the answer is yes. Um, but if you haven't seen it, uh, you can actually make a lemon into a battery with the presence of a galvanized nail, a copper penny, alligator clips, and obviously your lemon. And then you need a LED light. Essentially what happens when you create this battery, which you can watch a video, we're not actually creating the battery. I'm sorry, I don't have alligator clips and stuff. But what happens when you do this is essentially the zinc from the galvanized nail is present and then also the copper from the penny is present and these two are essentially like combating for the electrolyte which is the lemon juice so lemon juice is an electrolyte we'll get into that in a second but basically they're competing but the copper from the penny is like i'm getting there it's like racing it's ahead of the race like they're it's going to consume essentially it's like super super thirsty and it wants all the electrolytes to itself and it's more thirsty it's more parched than the zinc and the zinc isn't as like overpowering so the zinc is gonna like hang back and it's like not trying to be in front of everybody but the the the, the copper penny is like i'm big muff i'm gonna get all this you know i'm super thirsty i need it right now you know and i don't know if that analogy works but <laughs> that's kind of how i think of it is essentially the copper penny overpowers and it it can receive the electrolytes now what are electrolytes so a lemon is an electrolyte because a lemon contains a lot of um 
so we have essential like minerals and stuff and um, a lemon contains about like 90 grams of potassium or 90, 90 milligrams of potassium per lemon and a potassium or potassium is one of those essential minerals for us in our daily life and that is an electrolyte so like electrolytes would be like sodium calcium potassium like all of those are electrolytes so that is essentially what the copper and the zinc are competing for and then that in itself the reaction between that is what causes it, the development of like it pushes out what six volts of energy or six volts of um yeah like six volts of electrical charge is pushed out from that so that is super super cool that's essentially how you can make a battery out of a lemon with some other materials obviously but the lemon plays a part because it is an electrolyte so in hypothetical sense yes you could use something else other than a lemon because of these properties Lemons have flavonoids which contain anti um antioxidant properties so it said that drinking lemon water can be really good for you and it can be good for decreasing blood sugar it can be good for a bunch of these things it's not good it's not gonna be like an all magic solution to like losing weight and like dealing with acne and stuff like it's not just going to be a cure-all but it's going to be beneficial and it has properties that can be um, protective properties and they can be helpful for your health and it has all of those essential minerals too i actually watched a video on a crossover trial or some kind of study that was done to see the effects of black tea versus water versus lemon water on people's health and blood sugar and seeing how the levels change after being tested when they are drinking this um and it's shown that the the increase throughout the day or whatever it was sorry i'm not being specific but i'll put it in the link below um the increase throughout the day was much quicker with lemon water with with um with the tea the black tea and the water versus the lemon water it was a much slower increase in the blood sugars so that was another interesting note too about lemons and just how many properties one single fruit can have in itself this thing is actually pretty cool so as I said, lemons are an acid food and they are actually high in citric acid as well. And this is said to be high in vitamin C. The citric acid in the lemons are high in the vitamin C. And vitamin C obviously is really great for us. It's, um, it's said that properties from lemons can be producing, they can support cardiovascular health. They can help with kidney stones and certain, um, certain kidney, it can help with anemia, they can help it can help with a lot of beneficial um, benefits. It has a lot of benefits. And as I said, it's an antioxidant as well. There's also a lot of very broad statements about how lemons can help protect against cancer, or help fight cancer, how they can help improve a better complexion, how they can help prevent asthma. And while I will say, you know, I feel like the lemon in itself has a lot of great properties, I don't think that we should be claiming that it unless there's really good studies, which I feel like they're not really good studies, I don't think that we should claim that it is doing, it's an, an all a leaving thing, you know? Like it's not gonna just cure everything, it's not gonna prevent all diseases and stuff, but it has properties that can help in prevention of diseases. What's super funny is that too much lemon actually causes, poses a risk for kidney stones because it's, too much citric acid content so that's where it's a it's a fine line it's an interesting thing understanding ph levels and maybe understanding your baseline um is important to you for me i really can't have super high acidic foods while i still do because i really enjoy them when i have high acidic foods it really affects my my gastrointestinal tract i'm spitting up constantly i have really bad acid reflex so if you're somebody that has acid reflex trying to go for a more alkaline diet could be good for you but also knowing like everything in moderation you guys like i feel like everything needs to be taken in moderation everything needs to be done in moderation and it's just being conscious of everything too eating lemons very very consistently could also lead to mouth ulcers or it could lead to tooth abrasions and it could lead to heartburn like having too much of something is always going to end up in something bad probably so just make sure you are being moderate and don't try and make this a cure-all because it is not but it does have wonderful and magical properties and it is really delicious when you make lemonade which we're going to do now 
So I bought some black raspberries this time for grocery shopping and I wanted to make a raspberry, um, a black raspberry lemonade. So I'm gonna go ahead right now. I'm just making my simple syrup. I have a half cup water, half cup of sugar. I'm gonna let that go ahead and heat up. It's just gonna heat up for about uh, four or so minutes, I think. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little mix just until the sugar is dissolved, that's all. And to be fancy, but also for the flavor, I'm gonna be adding some basil into it. So I'm just gonna place that in the bottom of my thing here. And now I'm just mashing my raspberries in there. Oh, it smells good. Lemon can be used in cleaning products too. It actually makes a really, really great cleaner because it has those antimicrobial and antibacterial properties in it. So when life gives you lemons, you can make cleaning products, you can make a battery, or you could make lemonade if you really wanted to. So that's all I have for you guys today. A little bit of a shorter video, but I thought that we would breeze through that. I have still so much more for you guys to come. And even with this, like I could still be teaching you guys about basil and like we could talk about how freezing foods is affected and like we can talk about the real effects of lemon on the body but in my other series we're really going to be deep diving into how foods affect us and how it's different for everybody so i would definitely encourage you guys to look at that and without further ado i'm gonna enjoy some lemonade and i will be putting this recipe in the comments along with i will be putting some more recipes in the comments that i know for lemon cleaning products and lemon just other lemon desserts different things you can do with lemons so make sure you check out all the resources that i share with you guys because i always be sharing so many resources in my videos but all right guys i'll catch you later